The time had come for the next entry in my underrated cards video, looking at cards from EX Team Magma versus Team Aqua. However, in my research, I found that there aren't really any underrated cards from this set. I think everything in this set is appropriately rated. Of course, you have the exceptionally good Sceptile EX, Blaziken EX, and Swampert EX, but what really stood out to me in this set is the devotion to the theme of Team Magma versus Team Aqua, the card design, and the complete packages of Pokemon, trainers, and support that you get for each team, making it possible to create low power theme decks that are meant to play against one another, while also giving you the opportunity to create competitively viable decks that are elevated to the point of being two of the best decks in the 2004 format. Instead of the traditional underrated cards video, I wanted to dedicate an entire video just to talking about the Team Magma package and the Team Aqua package that exists within this set, and how they relate to the formation of these two fantastic archetypes. We don't get theme teamed sets like we used to, and I think the EX Team Magma versus Team Aqua knocks it out of the park so well that it should be a blueprint for any upcoming evil team sets we get. Let's start by talking about the balls. A lot of these cards are just parallels to one another, so I'm gonna be talking about them in sets. Here we have Team Aqua Ball and Team Magma Ball. Flip a coin if head, search your deck for any Pokemon that has that team in its name. If you flip Tails, search your deck for any basic Pokemon that has that team in its name. It's rapid search, whether you hit heads or tails, you're going to be able to find a Pokemon. And it's a basic trainer, so you can play four of these and go find four Team Magma or Team Aqua Pokemon. If you are playing a Team Aqua or Team Magma deck, you have a playset of this card. Now let's talk about the belt. So we have Team Aqua Belt, Team Magma Belt. You attach it to a Pokemon that has the corresponding team in its name. This one didn't see a ton of play because the utility was a bit awkward. Because the effect happens between turns, you attach this to one of your team Pokemon, and then after you attack, it activates between turns. You go and grab a Pokemon that evolves, from the Pokemon that the belt is attached to and you straight up evolve it between turns. But this only really makes sense if you already have a basic Pokemon in play. On your turn you evolve it to the stage 1, then attach the belt. That way you're attacking with the stage 1 but it becomes the stage 2 between turns so your opponent is actually attacking into the evolve form. Yes it's thinning your deck and this is a basic trainer so you can just attach it you're not using a supporter per turn trying to find an evolution card. There's just not a whole lot of benefit to evolving between turns. You generally want to evolve up into that stage 2 and use one of its larger attacks with something like rare candy. So the belt part of the package is really just to speed up the deck and to thin your deck at the same time but also protect against ATM rock. It's an interesting idea but it just doesn't really pan out. I feel similarly towards the technical machines and these do have different effects so we'll look at them separately. The Team Aqua TM01 for one colorless energy, you have Miracle that deals 10 damage, and then you just choose a special condition, and the opposing Pokemon is now afflicted with that special condition. There are several Pokemon in this format, even in this set, that benefit from the opposing Pokemon already being poisoned or already being burned. You deal a little bit of extra damage with your attack if they are, but I really don't see a reason that you wouldn't just pick Paralysis. Guaranteed Paralysis on top of 10 damage for one colorless energy? That's pretty stupid. I just don't know what you do with this other than stall for a turn because most Team Aqua centered decks or Team Magma centered decks already have different strategies going on and you don't really want to take a turn off just to stall your opponent when it's something that they could also just switch out of. Am I crazy here or is this just like it's really good it's just where does it go what do you do with it what Pokemon do you want this attached to? On the Team Magma side of TM01 we have Crushing Magma also 10 damage off of one colorless energy. Choose an energy card attached to the defending Pokemon and put that energy on the bottom of your opponent's deck. Again, this is this is kind of dumb, right? It's very powerful for one energy. It's colorless, so you can attach it to any Magma Pokemon. 10 damage off of one energy and a guaranteed energy removal? I mean, the question still remains is what deck does this go in and what Magma Pokemon are you attaching this to that doesn't already have its own synergy going on with the rest of the deck? 
These are two really good disruptive attacks. They just don't snowball into the momentum you want in an Aqua or Magma package. And I guess they are competing for deck space with all the other cards we're going to be talking about in this video. The hideouts are decent enough with their ongoing effects. The Team Aqua hideout makes it more difficult to retreat, and the Team Magma hideout damages basic Pokemon as they come into play, but only when they are played from your opponent's hand. So docking points here for cards like Dunsparce that grab Pokemon and put them directly onto the bench from the deck. Way too common of an effect in this format for Team Magma hideout to really stand out as a staple for Team Magma decks. Let's talk schemers. Discard any one Pokemon from your hand, then draw three cards. If you discarded a Pokemon that shares a team name with this schemer, draw four cards instead. You're only ever going to be running these schemers in their own designated team packages, so it might as well just read discard a Team Aqua Pokemon from your hand and draw four cards, or discard a Team Magma Pokemon from your hand and draw four cards. I really like that these are one-sided. It's not a your opponent also gets to draw type of card. It's also not one of the cards that makes you shuffle your hand before drawing four cards. Overall, just solid card draw for their respective archetypes. I'll also mention here that I love, love, love that all of these cards have that Kintsugi Mori stock artwork. I love the new designs, but man, I love also revisiting these older original designs. From Schemers to Conspirators. Search your deck for any combination of two basic Pokemon with the corresponding team in its name and basic energy cards. More often than not, this is going to function as a team-specific Pokemon fan club, but it's nice that you also have the option to just grab an extra energy whenever you're in a pinch if you already have most of your setup basics in play already. And of course, we got to talk about the leaders, Archie and Maxi. Search your deck for a Pokemon with a corresponding team in its name and put it onto your bench. Straight from the deck onto the bench. Any Pokemon with that team's name in it, doesn't matter if it's a basic, a stage 1, or a stage 2, when it hits the bench, you treat it as a basic Pokemon. If it is a stage 2, you put two damage counters on it. The trick is, most of the time, you're not going to be grabbing a basic, and you're not going to be grabbing a stage 2. You're going to be grabbing a stage 1 Pokemon and putting it directly into play, meaning that you don't even necessarily have to run the basic Pokemon. If you want to save some room in your deck, you can just cut out all the Poochiena, knowing that you're you're going to be grabbing the Mightyena directly with an Archie or a Maxi. And each team does get two different Mightyena that are pretty decent. These cards are rarely going to see play outside of their own respective team packages, but inside of their own archetypes, holy, this is some amazing search power here. Putting a stage one directly onto the bench as a basic Pokemon is powerful already, but the fact that you can just go search your deck for it, yeah, they good. Speaking of speed and efficiently, not only are you going to be able to get evolution lines into play faster, you're also going to be able to power up attacks faster with aqua energy and magma energy. Any energy card that's going to provide multiple energy is going to be useful, especially when it covers an attack cost that is not a basic energy. One of the limitations of running a dark type deck is that you only have four special darks and then you kind of have to outsource where that dark energy is coming from. Aqua energy and magma energy have you covered as long as that Pokemon is a Team Aqua or Team Magma Pokemon. Looking at Team Magma's Groudon and Team Aqua's Kyogre at the surface level, it's kind of hard to tell why these were two of the most powerful archetypes in their formats. But hopefully what I've made apparent in this video is that it's not these cards that are so powerful, it's the team engine that is backing them up. Getting these big basics into play more quickly, getting their support Pokemon into play more quickly, accelerating big attacks to get KOs earlier in the game. And those are just the poster mons for each team and the core of each of those decks. There are plenty more support and attack options within each team's build. On the Team Aqua side, we have Manectric and Lantern, which are great at accelerating energy into play and then moving those energy around. We also have Cacturn, which is a great alternative attacker when you're up against those decks that are weak to grass, which is a lot of decks in format. The most beautiful part of these three cards is that they are all stage one, so you can play them directly from your deck with an Archie with no drawback, just introducing a Poke Power straight onto the bench that you can use immediately. 
Team Magma had some similar tools in Camerupt and Claydol, stage ones that you could play directly to the bench from the deck using Maxi, instantly adding some powerful effects to your side of the field that allowed you to accelerate energy into play this time from the discard and then move those energy around. Team Magma also has a Zangoose that can call for family and get some of those Team Magma Pokemon into play faster, but for three colorless energy you can also deal a decent chunk of damage to a Rayquaza EX because you're hitting it for weakness. And we're not even going to touch on all of the other cards in the set that were fun but didn't necessarily see high competitive play. So if you do have some favorites from the set that I didn't mention, make sure you talk about them down in the comments, we'll get that discussion going. And let me know if there are any cards from this set that you feel are underrated and might deserve their own video. Glad I finally got to get all of this team talk out, but if you would like to continue, please do so below in the comments. Also, support the channel by doing all the YouTube stuff. Click all the right buttons. Till next time, bye bye